from the point of view of the body, you're in a speck in the midst of a vast infinity without circumference, without a center, except the center is wherever you are somehow. So you decide a vast something. And yet from the point of view of the mind ultimate in which all of this is arising, all of conditional existence mm -hmm. is a speck, a bindu, some point, almost a nothing. Very easy to influence it, very easy to bless it, <laughs> to shine on it completely. And from the point, point of view beyond the or mind, from the point of view of the very being, consciousness itself, inherently divine, really, at all. Only this absolute transparency that is the very divine. So even though you may be a personality that basically founded in the body, identified with the body, you function psychophysically, you function mentally all the time, you notice. You can't stop it, you can't stop thinking. As soon as you think of maybe getting a little meditative and you try to sit quiet, quietly, the mind seems to be insane. It just doesn't stop. It produces all kinds of nonsense. All moving you. Whatever's going on when you're just sitting there. Thinking, 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 feeling, feeling, feeling. Wanting, wanting, wanting. And the whole time you're I'm going to that, going to that, going to that, reacting to this. You can be sitting there, absolutely nothing happening <laughs> from anyone else's point of view and go through a cycle of extraordinary depth <laughs> of uh, reaction and design and imagination and so on. Don't you know? <laughs> well, that same kind of thing is going on all day long too, except that you you remain bodily active, your mind and your body are sort of together, and so if something comes up and you do it, you see. You're just sitting there, you're not at the moment doing anything, and you become aware of the craziness of it all. But then all the rest of the day, you're still being crazy, you see, because you're moved by that same thing that you're just noticing when you're sitting there quietly. It's animating your entire existence, and then you go to bed at night, and you may get some relief from mind and body here and there, but there's all these dreams and so forth. And just as crazy, sometimes interesting, but so is thinking, sometimes interesting. All kinds of things can be sometimes interesting, and most of the time it's crazy. <laughs> Chaotic. So there's, so mind is functioning even though you're identified with the body. And so it's doing the same thing that it does in the advanced processes of life. It's pursuing union. Now, a great principle, the great principle of meditation is you become what you meditate on. Therefore, meditate on the form and state of the Sadhguru. Realize the divine samadhi. But why is that principle true? It's based on an understanding of how things work all together. You're never involved in anything merely physical or sheerly physical. Every condition arising is psychophysical in your experience. And if you notice how the mind operates, the mind takes the form of whatever attention goes to. Whatever attention goes to, it becomes a form of mind, and mind takes on that form. You are here at this moment perceiving and thinking, and you have a sense that you, that you are aware of reality, so to speak, without getting grand about it, about what reality is ultimately. Uh, you have a feeling that you are observing this room as it is, and so forth. But your 
thoughts and your perceptions, all of this psychophysical awareness is of your own design. It is all expression of the mechanisms of the body-mind itself. And someone sitting in another point, place in the room has other thoughts, other perceptions, other qualities of awareness entirely. In other words, each one, each apparent individual, is taking a form according to his or her thought, or presumption, or point of view. You all have become what you think you know, what you presume to know. Mark Twain once said something amusing about uh, somebody, he said that this person uh, knows a great deal, but the most of what he knows ain't true. <laughs> Well, this is the way it is with everyone in general. This is the way the ego is. Look at one another. I can see all of you here right now. You see how each one has become what he or she knows, thinks he or she knows, presumes to be so. Uh, a traditional name for this, a word for this, is karma. So you have achieved union through mind. but you And you are always achieving union through mind, but you are achieving union with limits, limitation, egoity. You are being defined by what dies, what suffers, what is inherently limited. But the same process whereby you are being defined in limitation contains a law which functions in a process of liberation. That law is you become what you think. You take the form of where your attention goes. So the mind must become a devotee. You must relinquish your attention on these patternings that are defining you in limitation. Enter into contemplation of the realizer, the form and state of the realizer, and exceed this bondage of your own contraction of attention. You inevitably are becoming what you think you know, or what you know you think, and so on, what you feel, what you presume. That's going to happen anyway, you see. It's always happening. So you should grant attention to the ultimate and be transformed thereby. <laughs>